Hey up Leeds, how are you doing? Um, so I'm from Leeds, I was born and bred in Leeds, so yeah, I lived there 30 years, loved it. Um, it's about time, isn't it? It's about time that you got promoted. Um, so well done on that. Right then, so who am I? I'm John Steele and I'm yet another photographer. Um, you know, there's lots of us um, and it's just important that you find the right person to photograph your wedding. So you've found that perfect venue, you've found that perfect dress and now you need someone to come and make you look beautiful and just capture what everything that's happens. Hi Leslie, you all right? Right then. So <clears throat> what kind of photographer am I? Because the different photographers there's um, what I call kind of your stylish, your elegant photographers. And these are the people that want to spend like hours and hours just walking around with the bride and groom and creating all these elegant portraits. That's not me, I'm afraid. Um, I'm what you call a documentary wedding photographer. And that means that I'm there to capture your day. I'm not there to set anything up. I'm there to capture exactly what happens. So I thought what I'd do is instead of tell you about how great I am, I'd actually show you like some of the pictures from kind of all the uh, parts of the wedding. Um, so I'll photograph from the bridal preparations. And if you go for my unlimited package and we'll come on to packages later, um, you can actually um, get me till whatever time you want. 21 hours at a wedding is my record, which I never want to be, to be fair. But it means you get your full story captured. Okay, so I'm just going to try and share my screen. If it goes peak tongue, then uh, <laughs> just bear with me. Right, okay. I'm still here. If anyone has any questions, kind of just ask because I have no idea what's happening. Um, right, so I have actually no idea if you can see this. I hope you, hope you can. Um, hopefully uh, the guys at Wedding Fair Yorkshire will run downstairs, because I'm actually here at the moment, and they'll say, John, you're doing fine, we can see everything. If not, I'm talking nonsense. Right, so when you start a wedding, you start bridal preparation usually, and what does that mean? Is it just pictures of someone having makeup done? The answer is no. You, you, your bride is with all the best friends, with the family, and you create some amazing pictures. All I do is I'm coming and I'm just photographing what's there. I'm not trying to set anything up. So there's so many emotions at a wedding and these are what I want to capture. So and this, this picture is just a bride I'm getting her makeup done and she's just really, really happy with her friends. These, I also capture the details. <clears throat> these flowers, these are um, from the uh, the brilliant down to earth florist. You're welcome, Paul and Sharon. Um, they're easily the best florists around. Um, I always recommend them to do a fantastic job. And this is what they create. They create beautiful pictures. So things like gerberas, I'm all over them because I love color. So I want to capture everything that happens. I don't need to like, go out and take these outside. I just capture them in the room. I'm there to capture wedding faces. So it's not just the beautiful. I'm always after, after I'm, I'm after the different as well, you know? So if someone's getting drunk at 10 o'clock in the morning and they've got like crazy faces, they're gonna get got, okay? I'm also capturing like your best friends. You know, there's lots of huggings. There's just everything that's happening. And this is what a documentary photographer does. Um, one of the best parts of a wedding for me, because I've got two daughters and I always put myself in the dad's shoes. And the dads are brilliant, you know, like some of them, the first time they see the daughter in the gown, just ready, some of them just burst out into tears. And I want to capture that moment because I'm putting myself in the dad's shoes. I'm thinking 20 years down the line, that will be me. That will be my daughters. And yeah, I'll, I'll be in floods of tears, absolutely. I think um, as well, the, the older you get, the more you experience weddings, the more you actually realize what they mean to you. Um, for me, I used to go in and I used to photograph 
like shoes on a bath and dresses hanging up in trees. And then I realized that weddings are about people. And it's these moments, and it's not just the bride and groom, it's the guests, it's the families. These are the people that I actually want to capture. And these are moments that will last forever. Some some picture like that will just, you know, that, that will never get old. Bra team bride, team groom. You know, you don't have to wait till like kind of you stood in a line at a venue to capture that. You know, everyone wears dressing gowns these days. So capture that, just the fun, you know, the excitement. You know what's going to happen all day. And it's just capturing these moments forever. And this is what I'm trying to get over. It is forever. So when you're choosing a wedding photographer, think about long term. Think, right, do I love this? these pictures? This Is this photographer going to capture exactly what I want? Or are they going to get like smoke bombs out and do things like look good for like 10 seconds, but then five five years down the line, you're like, why have I got smoke bombs? What is the point in that? That's just crazy. You know, real emotions, real weddings, that's all I'm about. I'm telling the story. So sometimes a, a groom is so nervous that they just want to do something and they might actually get the hoover out in the, the actual venue and start hoovering. That's what he did. He had a pink hoover as well. So hugs as well, emotions, like, you know, mother and son, it's not just about the bride. These are the really, really special moments that I'm trying to capture forever. There's funny moments as well, like a, a mum steaming a, a bride's dress. It's perfect, but yet she still wants to steam it because she just wants it even more perfect. Then once in a lifetime emotions of like happiness and I don't know what's happening and it's just like, yeah. These, these, this is everything that goes on just in the morning, you know. Um, tears, I'm all over tears. Tears sell. So if anyone cries, I want to be there to capture that because that's an emotion that will last forever. Um, and then, you know, dads again, the first time a dad sees his daughter like dressed, it's just, it's such a special moment. Some dads are rubbish. Some dads go, oh, you look all right. Others just floods of tears. And uh, it's, it's those tears and the emotions that I'm after, you know, that I'll photograph the ones that are all right. But then funny things happen, you know. If if the bride's dog does a wee in the kitchen, the bride mops it up, and I'm there to capture that. Once again, it's just telling the story. It's not faking the story. It's, these are the real things that happen, and this is what I'm all about. Let me just see if there's any questions, because I'm screen sharing at the moment, and uh, it's all going all right. Right, so let's just see. Hit that lover emoji for John, yeah. John's like an extra pair of eyes. <laughs> yeah, some crazy eyes, yeah. Hey up, Sharon Tinker, I've just given you a uh, advert, so be nice to me. Um, yeah, it's, um, just seeing if there's any more. Take onions with you, get everyone crying. Oh yeah, onions. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that next time, Lana, yeah. So next time I'm gonna bring some onions. Um, right, let me see if I can go back into um, where I was. Uh, sorry about this. Right, so then you've got things like the ceremony. And ceremonies are funny things because the vicars and registrars have a mind of their own. Um, some vicars, registrars allow you um, to photograph the ceremony, others don't. So you've kind of got to go with what they say. Registrars, not so much. You just argue with them. That's what I usually do because it's so important to capture these moments. So again, illustrations. I want to capture the happiness of like the bride and the groom. There's little things that happen. There's moments when you stood in front of everyone and you, your nerves are just there. It's like me standing, sitting on a camera, like talking nonsense, but I'm trying. Um, but yeah, it's like these emotions that I want to capture. This this hug. When I delivered this to the groom, he looked at this picture for like literally 10 minutes. He was just sat looking at this picture and he, he just remembered now how special this moment was because this is the bride's mother and this is just before the bride walked in. And these are just all his emotions and this, this picture meant so much to him. Like I nearly didn't deliver it because I didn't think it was like brilliant from a compositional point of view. But then I thought, you know what, it's about moments. So yeah, he'll treasure that forever. The groom crying, you know, grooms sometimes don't cry. Grooms, come on, get your onions out, you know, get some crying. And this is what I want to capture. This is what like a documentary photographer does. Nothing forced, nothing faked, just real life, okay? Even like a, a groom looking, and what's the rules like? Are you allowed to look? 
Like if you look at a royal wedding, no one will look. Everyone always looks forward and you're not allowed to walk at the bride. But then once Google it and the Google will say, he better look. I've spent so much money. You know, this is the best I'm going to ever look. So he better blooming look. And uh, yeah, so once again, it's just photographing everything that's happening. You know, a bride arriving, getting some champagne, um, <clears throat> like just the look that a bride will give the groom at the ceremony you know it is love and this is what these are the emotions what i want to capture the first look like even brides, bridesmaids crying and flower girls and you know it's not just about a um a bride and groom who's a wedding there are guests involved and i'm trying to capture that because it all helps to tell the story i want to you to look at your wedding five years down the line and when you see the slideshow, I want you to like transport it to back where it was that wedding day. I want you to be able to feel the emotion that you were feeling, you know, the fun, the tears, everything, you know, looks like this just don't happen every day. And these are the moments that I want to treasure, like you capture. And then you can treasure them for a lifetime, really. Mum's crying, you know, just everything. Just the, these are the, just the special moments. Um, I've only selected like a few weddings from today because I've shot so many. I uh, shot my wed first wedding about 15 years ago, so I've done a couple. Um, and then, yeah, once again, just the special looks. These are what you want to get, you know. This is why you want a documentary photographer. You want someone, you don't want someone faking this. Some some photographers are like, oh, like, can you just look at each other like like you love each other? I was like, no, nah, no, nah, just, you know, capture it as it happens. You know, just like, this is one of my best friends, you know. He means the world to me. And this picture just means everything because I just see how happy he is. I know what he's been through in life. And when I can capture something like that, it's just, you know, it makes me smile. Um, just, yeah, it's just, yeah, I, I just keep repeating myself, but these are just the special pictures. That, this is why I do it. It means so much to me capturing these memories for everyone, okay? Um, and then there's other bits of the wedding. Like, I'm known to do kind of, fun wacky weddings I've, I've won loads of awards and all the awards that i've won have been for like creative pictures but they're not something i've set up once again it's just standing at the right moment and capturing it and just kind of working out what is going to happen so i'll just go through some of these so my computer is not working so a bride jump, jumping off a windowsill because we had we had sat in putting this windowsill because the light was beautiful um you know, just something a little bit different, and that creates just a, a strange image, but it's, uh, it's a valuable image. Um, this bike was wedding themed, and this this tricycle was a surprise from the groom to the bride. So we knew that we had to have like a little ride on that, and they were just like riding around up and down. So this wasn't set up, it was just naturally what was happening. You know, there's a moment after the meal when everyone's had a few, and then anything can happen so you know if people are like dancing they were trying to do floss before this um human hoopla you know just things like this these are the moments that happen at a wedding and sometimes people miss this sort of stuff but this is the stuff that makes me so happy and capturing you know things like kids standing on the jeeps these uh, these people are in a four by four club, and they wanted to bring the uh, all the four by fours into the wedding venue, and they said that kids could dance on them and stuff. And again, it's telling the story of them people. It's telling the story of what's happening. A bloke who's a, who's had a few and he's fallen asleep, and someone's put toast on his head. It's all part of a wedding. It's it's a little bit different, but you know these are the things that happen. A bride that wanted to sing Valerie, you know, she wasn't the best singer, granted, but it were her day and she were going to sing Valerie and she were going to enjoy herself. Um, <clears throat> once they've cut the cake, like there's, there's two shots that a wedding photographer <laughs> like doesn't enjoy taking because they're just boring. One is a cutting of the cake and the other one is signing the register, but you have to take them. So you're thinking, how can I make this interesting? So once a, like, a bride's cut it and she's like shoved cream in uh, the groom's face, then you know, there's certain things that happen in, I just like the way he paused and he just, I just grabbed that. Pig racing, right. P 
pig racing if you've never done pig racing right it's amazing it's the best thing ever um but think about think about how you can have like different entertainment you know weddings don't have to be kind of standard you can do what you want and believe me like a lot of my couples do um this i've no idea what we're happening but i liked it so i, I captured it um dogs dogs at weddings are ace you know these two um they, they were just brilliant they had a dog walker with them they were dressed up and there was no way i wasn't going to make a portrait of them two so like with a few treats and a little bit of know-how managed to grab that one you know brides doing handstands if a bride wants to do a handstand i'm going to capture it if a dress is going to fall down then so be it you know let me just uh have a check see what uh is happening see if there's any questions um right da, 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 right Williams. john how far do you travel for weddings um leslie i travel anywhere in the uk really i, I don't say worldwide because it's just too much hassle uh, my next wedding in a couple of weeks is actually in dorset so anywhere in the uk um because i've got my kids and i don't want to uh, be away from them too much really um when fairs yorkshire love pig racing everyone should love pig racing right if anyone wants to set up a wedding business right don't do your photo booth get some pigs do some pig racing like it's perfect for someone who's already set up like a casino or something as like a standalone just get some like tracks and buy some pigs lots of batteries and it's the best thing in the world honestly it's so unusual um right so i'll just go through a few more of these this was limbo but then it looked like they were having a michael jackson competition no idea what happened there but who cares you know i'm there to capture the whole thing so even when like a bride's mum is coming in my car to go to the venue and i see a neighbors it's part of the story these are the, these are the pictures that will you can look back on um a bagpiper this bagpiper didn't want to do anything but i met him i said i tell you what so you've not done anything you've played someone in a ceremony out of a ceremony and now you're going home but before you go home let's have a walk around car park eh let's do some music so you know we created pictures like this bouquet tossing right it don't happen that, that often at weddings i think it's because bouquets are so expensive but right if you go with down to earth florist again you're all right sharon there yeah. um they actually give you a bouquet like a practice bouquet that you can actually throw which is amazing because you get so many like amazing pictures from it because girls like to battle over them bouquets really do it's it's amazing the um, the girl on the left hand side she's she's not particularly happy but uh yeah like just just do it just have fun wedding should be fun this was an alice in wonderland themed wedding so you know people just do what they want just turn up as uh like mad hatter and everything um so what i thought i'd do as well is there's lots of other pictures i can go on forever which I, obviously i can't do one thing i will say is um think about your party okay um there's so many photographers that will only stay for the first dance and then they go or some photographers say that they're a party photographer but then they'll stay an hour like and what happens is after your first dance then there's usually a couple of dances where everyone's up on the dance floor then it quietens down and then the buffet goes out and then no one dances so you're looking a good two hours of staying before you can actually get to the nitty-gritty but sometimes oh man if you go for like the unlimited package like and you can get me all there like some of the pictures that happen on the dance floor are absolutely amazing so this was the first dance this uh this is where the bride bride and groom they were doing a 10 second shuffle and then all of a sudden they picked her up and started swinging around um this is when they had a band and uh decided to get the shoes out and chat on the shoe phone um which is obviously different so hands right this is um good old alan your friend alan from wedding fairs yorkshire so what he does to his uh his his newly uh his, his new wife is he picks up some confetti and he shoves it in his in the face that's lovely isn't it but it makes an ace photo so i'm happy um this is what a party should look like people should be sweating it's going to be a while till we can have parties like this unfortunately but yeah it will happen again 
Um, and this is the stuff that you get like when you stay late at night, when everyone's so drunk they can hardly stand up and they're just dancing, singing along. You know, it's it's absolutely brilliant. These are the things that I absolutely love. There you go, that's just carnage. Like get a band, bands are amazing, and then just have carnage on the dance floor. Um, people trying to be robots, people falling over. I've got so many pictures of people falling over. In fact, I usually have a like, what, when I'm talking to my brides and grooms, I say, right, who's gonna fall over? And they're usually quite, they're usually right. Dad and daughter dance, you know, if you're gonna walk like an Egyptian or do Thriller, then do it, you know? These are things what you should be capturing at a wedding. You know, Proud Mary, if you don't have Proud Mary, like on your dance floor, there's something wrong because it's just the best, you know? Um, so these are just kind of illustrations of the sort of pictures that I get. Obviously, I photograph the group photos and I do what you want, but I'm just trying to show you, like, document, show you how a documentary photographer captures a wedding. Um, and this is, you know, I think it's just important to think of like how you want your wedding pictures to be. It's important that you tell the photographer and you choose the photographer. You know, it's the three Ps. You've got to fall in love with the person. You've got to love the pictures, and you, then it's down to price. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's it's trying to think of that really. So when oh, let me just stop sharing my screen. Sorry about that. I'm going mad. Um, stop sharing. Oh yeah, I'm back. Right. So yeah, so I think talking about price, um, I have three different packages. My digital package, which is eight hours, that starts at nine nine five. And then the unlimited one goes up to 1600. Um, if anyone wants more information, I can email you my price list. It's just john at johnsteelphotography.com and it's S T E E L. There's no L, there's no E on the end. All oh, right, yeah, it, um, it's absolutely flashing up. Um, I'm having a new website done at the moment and uh, hopefully that will be launched in the next week or so so um just be nice if you go on my current website because i've not really updated it because i'm having the new one done but you'll still get a good kind of idea of the sort of stuff i do so has anyone got any more questions i'm just uh, checking now uh, i think alan johnson has some pretty candid parts part. what's the strangest wedding i've ever done oh my word right um there's there's loads um one of the most bonkers wedding I ever did. It was in Scotland, and uh, it was a ba it, it was a wedding for a band, and um, it was amazing. They, they got married in a village hall, and they didn't want any pictures in the village hall, which was fine, which I appreciate. And then, oh, then they, they went to this venue, and it was overlooking the sea, and they had this marquee for three hundred people. It was on top of this cliff. And what happened that there was like 70, 70 mile an hour winds and all of a sudden we were doing some like bride and groom portraits and uh, th then the um, the marquee just ripped and it was trying to take off. It was like one of the most dangerous things that I've ever seen. It was like this massive sail on a hill, 70 mile an hour winds trying to take off. So then because everyone was in bands and community like workers and stuff, they all had bands. So everyone ran in, got the furniture out dragged it all and then they still had the keys for the village hall so they went down to the village hall started setting up everything and then opposite that there was like an old school uh, tea shop so the bride and the old dears they went in and everyone else went up and set set this uh, set up set up in the village hall but the village hall only held 120 people and there's 300 people but within three hours, they actually had a hot meal, a lighting rig, and everything you could have. have, you could have. Um, no one could actually kind of get in. People had to go under the tables, over the tables. I couldn't take pictures because it was just too crowded. But um, yeah, it's unbelievable. And like most weddings, it had been wedding over, but they were like, no, we must work, make it work. Um, and then, um, then what happened afterwards they were all into drumming and fire so they're doing like drumming and fire and stuff outside then the police got called and then they moved them on because then they went back to the original venue because the winds had died down but the marquee had been taken down but there was this log cabin but they had this amazing party under the stars and it's unbelievable um yeah so i've shot 
lots. I've been to see Santa Claus. I've shot night uh, weddings in nightclubs. I've, I've, yeah, rodeo bulls. I've I've had with everything. Do you provide skateboards for groomsmen? No, I don't. But I always have my skateboard in the car. And uh, I'll give you an example of a skateboard thing. So anyone who doesn't know, I uh, oh I've forgotten how to share a screen. Well, I won't give you an example because it's uh, too much like thinking. But yeah, I have photographed uh, skateboarding brides, uh, groomsmen. I've got another one to do in October as well, which I'm so looking forward to. Because I used to be a skateboarder as a skateboarder for 20 years um and yeah so that's the sort of thing i do um i've probably chatted too long actually so i better start to uh wind this down so if anyone would um like to um kind of ask any questions or if you want a price list email in then just email me at john at john steel photography uh, dot com what's lana saying surely it would have been in a scottish accent Lana, I'm not going there with my Scottish accent because the only Scottish accent I can do is beg me out of train spotting and uh, like some of the words aren't broadcastable. <laughs> I'll do it like when you uh, when when you sort me me um, me mask out. Right. So okay, I will leave you like I'll leave you on that. So I'm sure Grant will uh, put some animation on, and it's bye from me. It's been emotional. Thank you very much.